good afternoon, everyone. We thank you so much for your patience as we um, got ourselves together so that everyone could get in and enjoy this space and enjoy this particular occasion. I'm going to ask that everyone would please stand as we welcome in our honorees today. As they're queuing up the pomp and circumstance, I want to remind you that we will be live streaming. So if you could go to Sonny Badu's Facebook page and go ahead and share and like, that would be excellent.
can we give all of our honorees a big round of applause? Come on, y'all can do better than that. You can come out here on Saturday afternoon to be cute. All right. Thank you. You may take your seats. I'm Dr. Alfie James, and I serve on the board of directors for Trinity International University of Ambassadors and Trinity International University of Ambassadors TIUA School of Business, and it is my pleasure to serve as the mistress of ceremony this afternoon. Uh, we will follow our program as printed, so next we will have a welcome by Dr. Talisha Berry, followed by the national anthem by Pastor Edwina Andrews, and then a prayer by Nora Sharif Borden and then a uh, song, uh, Mr. Shola Emmanuel is gonna bless us with an instrumental. All right, Dr. Talisha. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Talisha Berry publisher of Courageous Woman Magazine. It is my pleasure to welcome the families and friends of the Women on the Move graduating class, wait, and one man of divinity. Yes. <laughs> uh, the graduating class of Trinity International University of Ambassadors, Atlanta, Georgia. On behalf of U the university, President Dr. H.T. Mohair and Chancellor Dr. Jacqueline Mohair faculty, chaplains, and of course, all of you special guests, we welcome you. Throughout this ceremony, you will be blessed and uplifted as we hear encouraging words and courageous stories from a few of our notable faculty, speakers, and musicians. To the family and friends of our graduates, thank you all for your continuous support and for being present on this historical day of celebration. To the graduates, never forget this day was predestined. God already had this day planned for you, just as God already designed the program today. In Psalms 139, 13, and 14, David says, for you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul know it well. When we formed, when we were formed in our mother's womb, God had already taken the perfect measurements in which to create each of you as unique and wondrous creature, creatures of possibility. And for those reasons alone, you must never forget that there is no one else like you. Thank you for standing strong in those moments you felt your knees buckle. Thank you for pressing through the storms that challenged you. Thank you for your tenacity and your faith to keep going when you couldn't see what was on the other side. And thank you for walking through the fire and trusting God would bring you through. And thank you for your light and your impact and your willingness to empower others. We welcome you as graduates of Trinity International University of Ambassadors, and we welcome you each to the first day of the next level of your incredible journeys. We welcome distinguished women on the move. Welcome elite woman warriors. Welcome to each of you who once were little girls who dreamed that this moment would one day come. Welcome to the courageous women examples of greatness. And finally, as we all, we should always remember that everything we do, we must mean it. Because everything that we do with meaning, it must then become meaningful to the world. Welcome, doctors.
Next, we will have the national anthem by Pastor Edwina. Would you please stand? take this time to give honor and praise to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you, I'm going to say, instead of bowing your heads, I want you to lift your heads up to the Savior. And Father God, we come before you, O oh gracious and mighty God. We worship you this day. We honor you this day. We reverence you this day, God. God, we thank you for those that have believed in us that we should be here today, God. I thank you for every graduate, Lord God, every woman and the one man, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord God, for such a time as this. You have chosen us, and we, show, we have decided, Lord God, to take on the assignment, God, and to do that which you have called us to do. According to your word in Psalms 32, 8, you said you would instruct us and teach us and show us the way that we should go. You should watch over us. But most importantly, God, you would guide us with your eyes. And so, God, we thank you for such a time as this. We give you the praise, not the devil, but we give you all the praise and all of the glory because it is you that is worthy to be praised. Sometimes we give the devil too much victory. But, God, we decided that this is a day always that you are bigger, better than anyone, God. Hallelujah. And we know that we 
as your vessels, the ones that you have chosen for such a time as this, Lord God. We have the power over the enemy. So right now, in the name of Jesus, let us own the power which you have for us, Lord God. Bless this ceremony, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon this ceremony today, God. God, that it will be enlightening. Somebody came here who did not know you, but God, when they leave, oh, glory to God. We pray that they will come to know you, that our light that shines so brightly within inside of us shall be glorified to you. People would see our good deeds and want to glorify you, God. So, God, we thank you. Now, God, we thank you for Dr. Mo here. All that you continue to pour into her, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God that she continues to pour out to your people. I want to thank personally Dr. Talisha Walker that you used her to see something in me, God, for such a time as this. So we have chosen, God, we have decided, God, to take on the assignment to transform and impact this present world for the kingdom of God. And God, we give you all the honor and all the praise and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next, we will have a song by Mr. Shola Emmanuel. It's okay to clap.
good song. That was real jazzy. I like that. <laughs> next, I ask you to please give a warm round of applause for our next speaker. It's Representative Billy Mitchell, and he's going to talk about the purpose of this occasion. Representative Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Please be seated. You honor me with this standing ovation. <laughs> it is good to be here, and I tell you, the Rock Hill Church, uh, evidenced by this overflowing crowd, that God will certainly pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. I, I must say uh, to the pastor of this church, uh, I know firsthand he is a visionary and a prophet. So give me an opportunity to say that uh, publicly. Uh, I, I know him to have the, the, the courage of an Elijah, the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of David, the joy of Esther, the patience of Job, the foresight of Jeremiah, the vision of Joseph. Oh, he has the courageousness of a Martin Luther King Jr the leadership of a Booker T. Washington, the inside of a Du Bois, the tact of a Sojourner Truth, the perseverance of a Rosa Parks, the intellect of a Benjamin Banneker, the, the initiative of a Harriet Tubman, the wit of a Phyllis Wheatley, the articulousness of a Frederick Douglass, the creativity of a George Washington Carver, oh, I can go on about him. For he has the integrity of a Dr. Jackie Mohair, the sincerity of a Dr. Talisha Berry, the charisma of a Dr. Alfie Jennings, and the good looks of a Billy Mitchell. So, so please give him a hand. Now, now, I will tell you, I was bestowed with this honor with some civil rights luminaries. And I, I take that honor so very seriously. It is on my wall. Uh, I have everybody who, who knows me personally to make sure you call me doctor. Uh, uh, we, we take it very seriously. There are those who was given this honor when I was that are no longer with us. For instance, the Reverend Dr. C.T. Vivian, uh, the Reverend Dr. Joseph Lowry, uh, Congressman John Lewis, so I think that we all have that responsibility to take this honor and to carry the mantle forward in the communities that we serve. We live in a society now where it's getting more and more difficult to vote, but easier and easier to carry guns. We need to take that mantle forward and do something. And I'm just going to tell a real, very quick story so that we can uh, uh, move on how I came to this position to value civil rights and the like. And it was because of, of my grandmother. Uh, she had been 103 years old today had she not passed away some two years ago. She used to live in a town called Aliceville, Alabama. And as it were, she, two women in her community were arrested for teaching people how to vote absentee ballot and, 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 and registering to vote. They decided that they were going to get the people in the community all together, march from Aliceville to the Capitol, tie up all the traffic, bring attention to this terrible injustice, and then bail the women out of jail. Well, as it happened, word had gotten out that the sheriff of the county was going to all the black folks' homes and saying, don't get involved with the march. We've got good relations here. And he was giving out hams and turkey. Now, my grandmother thought at the time, black folks ain't going to sell their souls for hams and turkey. So they continued to plan the march anyway. As it happened, on the day that the march was to start at the, the first location, they were expecting some 300 and some odd people there. But there waiting on them were only about 12 people. She said, could it be? that our folk would sell their soul for hams and turkey? Well, they decided that if God was on their side, they were going to march on anyhow. As they marched on, uh, 
that my, my grandmother told me that po folks thought her face was wet from the sleep that was happening, but she said she was crying just thinking about the fact that folks had sold their souls for hams and turkey. My grandmother said her, her feet started hurting. Now, I know y'all didn't know my grandmother, but I knew the story was coming to an end quickly when she said her feet started hurting. Uh, so she said, I, she, she did a quick prayer. She said, dear Lord, if, if these folk don't care any more about their situation than they would sell their souls for hams and turkey, maybe I don't need to be out here either. Well, let me tell you, they, uh, to make a long story short, they did march on. And, and they did bail the women out of jail and bring attention to the terrible injustice. But as they turned the corner off of their first stop, there, waiting on them, were over 400 others. And they had their marching shoes on. And they had baskets full of ham sandwiches and turkey sandwiches to feed the hungry marchers. Let's carry on further. Congratulations to you. give a little bit of a brief introduction for our next speaker and, I, and then there's going to be a video and then she's going to come. Uh, but we're talking about uh, Dr. Forbes Riley. Okay. I'm getting a little bit more excitement from over here. We got some hams and turkeys. Somebody give them something over there. Come on. It's something we have to learn how to and we honor those who, you know, we're supposed to give honor to whom honor is due. And Dr. Riley is definitely one to whom honor is due. All right. That's a little bit better. She's a celebrity TV host and an industry leader and pioneer in the field of cable television, infomercials, and global home shopping TV. Producing over, y'all get this number, 2.5 billion dollars, that's billion with a B, in sales uh, globally. She's a true renaissance woman, best-selling author and high-performance results coach. She started her stellar career in TV and movies as an actress to being the spokesperson launching products, uh, I'm sorry, launching more than 1,500 products to starting companies and being philanthropic and helping to make dozens of millionaires. Can you honor the person that you're standing in the presence of greatness right now? Can we honor that? Somebody ought to say, I'm that next millionaire. Somebody ought to reach out and get a little bit of that. I just want y'all to know she came and sat next to me on purpose, so that's mine. I'm, I'm playing with mine, all right? All right, so there's going to be a video, and then the next speaker you hear will be Dr. Forbes Riley. I've grossed $2.5 billion by tweaking people's pitches on infomercials. You hear things differently than I do. I hear money every time somebody talks. I hear enrollment engagement. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and then we've got a great product for you. Take a look at this. She's got me, she's got me working out of, what are these called? It's called a spin gym. She launched her multi-million dollar company by mortgaging her house and her kids' education fund. She knew it was gonna happen. I think pitch is everything. I don't care what kind of product that you've got. If you don't know how to pitch or articulate it, you will go nowhere. I coach CEOs of Fortune 100 companies who have stood there and told me, Forbes, you pitch my company better than my marketing team. You don't get to sit home and wait for the phone ring. No, it doesn't really work that way. You write down action steps. You get a mentor. You find someone who's done what you've done. 
and you ask them how they did it. If you dream it and you hold it to be true, you keep driving towards that. You keep talking about that dream and actually you keep taking action. And then one day you're like, oh my God, how did I do that? I started out as an actress in Hollywood and a TV host, everything from the X Games to my own talk show. And about 20 years ago, I took the entrepreneurial route. I ended up on home shopping. I'm tired of seeing women suffer. I grew up heavy my whole life. My mom was 260 pounds and she was miserable. You want to be yourself. I appreciate that you want your food. If you want to be glamorous and gorgeous and fun and that people tell you that you're wonderful, don't you? You want all those things. Okay, I can't be the one to tell you that. You need to be the one to own that. And that's where your success lies. When someone says to you, what do you do? They do not care what you do. <gasps> you don't? No, they care what you can do for them. It's never the resources. It's not your time or your money. Billionaires have no more time than you and I have. They have resourcefulness. They have a deep down drive. And if I can empower you to do that, you can have everything you want. Let me make your life explode. I don't want to change it. I don't want to transform it. I want to make it the best version of you possible. today and someone said God destined you to be here I already wrote it well check this out it's 1970 in Long Island New York I live in a neighborhood where all the faces look the same Jewish and Italian pizza pasta matzah <laughs> I'm 10 years old and I'm already politically active we got a little voting booth back then for those of you who remember it's Wallace Montgomery and Nixon and I'm out there, I'm, you know. One day I get to school, now I don't know if you can see my eyes, they're hazel, but I'm happy they're green. Right now they're glowing green. <laughs> but that morning, I guess they look kind of brown because they took all the kids in school and half the kids with brown eyes had to stay over there and the kids with blue eyes and green eyes got to go home, got extra credit and had a great little life and us brown eyed kids had to stay after school, do extra homework and all of a sudden I'm like protesting. What do you mean, what are you talking about? What's wrong? Entire week of this nonsense. And we are 10 year olds, we are protesting. End of the week, we get to an assembly like this and the principal says, so how you doing? And we're yelling and screaming in the back, this is not fair, this is an injustice. And he said, let me tell you something, it's 1970 in America. You don't even know what injustice is. You don't realize that there's people in this world who are judged by the way they look because of something they cannot change, the color of their skin. You can't change the color of your eyes. And it sunk in and how blessed would it be that God made my eyes look brown that day? Because I got the message. I got a very profound colorblind message. I went off to college and there was a black and white acting group together. They were it's separate. My university just honored me 37 years later because I put those two groups together. Because I never saw color. Somebody, in fact, I think it was Angela, Reminded me that I'm not African-American. Shame on you. I didn't notice. <laughs> I've been called high yellow, you know, it's the lips. <laughs> I then went on in this little world of mine to not see what other people were seeing. On both sides of the scope, you all see things differently than I do. And I found a little boy, part of the Big Brother Little Boy Little Brother program. And I don't know if we can share a picture of him, but you wanna talk about the fact that I am so freaking destined to be right here, pouring into you? You have no idea. And I got Dexter, a beautiful, crazy little boy, eight years old, not the nicest of kids either. Me and my ex-husband, and I'll tell you what, he was tough, he was challenging. He came on every weekend with us when I started to date my then husband. Dexter right out. Go on to the next picture. I'll just do this to go on to the next picture. That's a picture of Dexter and Matthew, my little brothers, and everywhere we went. You can see my ex is a big white blonde haired guy and how cool everywhere we went to call Dexter our little brother. And he became more of a son to me. He had a mom, no dad, and he lived in South Central Los Angeles. And he had this vision, he's like, you know, white people live up there on that, that big mountain where my father-in-law lived. I said, they're living next door to lots of people who are all very colored. 
please stop that nonsense. You don't know what you can be. And he became the subject of me creating this idea that maybe I could make a profound difference in at least one little boy. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Go on. Dexter is now nine years old. My ex is running for city council and he had all the kids from all over the neighborhood draw a day in their life. Dexter drew a picture of a drive-by shooting with a kid dead on the street. Funny how life happens. That's him at my wedding, this little boy, this little sunshine of my life who I promised could do anything. And I got pushed back because I used to go to neighborhood parties where I was the only white face. And I said, you can be anything you want to be. I love you. I believe in you. Because you're a boy. You're a human. You're a person. I don't see what you see in the mirror. I see your insides. I see your heart. I see your passion. I see your desire to be something. And you can do that, my Dexter. And he's right there on the going. And that's my boy. Best man at my wedding. Why wouldn't he be? He was my son. If you choose to mentor other people, all you little kids in the audience, how we raise them is how they're going to grow up. He got all my mentoring, all my love, and all my lessons. That's Lovell, his, his birth mom. One day, Dexter, I'd just given birth to my twins 19 years ago, was walking from a haircut to church. Now Dexter had no babies, had no tattoos, had no reason to join a gang because he was loved. All right outside of USC, one of the most prominent schools in the entire country, he's walking from a haircut to church on Hoover Street, minding his own business wearing the colored blue. And a kid who grew up two blocks away from him who never met my boy, didn't have a mentor, didn't have someone who believed in him, except for the gang members. He was told, find someone to kill wearing blue. From a haircut to church, walking by himself. This kid he never met walked up to him and unloaded a clip into his back 10 times and killed my little boy and left him for dead on the ground. Now, I'm a firm believer that life happens for you, not to you. How did I get here? It's not that acting and the infomercials and the money I generated. I think it's been the story of my life that said, if you could show this story, I've never really talked about it in public like this. But now I got a doctor that makes me a little bit more credible. Yes. I don't know if you've ever been to a murder trial. You don't want to go. I couldn't sit through most of it because it was way too graphic. But I just dug up some of the pictures of what it was like to go through that experience. To have your heart ripped out because some kid didn't have a mentor. That's what we're talking about here. It wasn't a race thing. It was you had somebody who loved you, believed in you, and you just, boom. Next one. That's Matthew. Matthew still calls me empty. I was the only white face along with my ex at his funeral too. I'm not sure why we choose to separate. I don't see the freaking color. I see a class full of beautiful women and one guy. <laughs> I see hearts and souls. I really do, I always have. And I just wanted to honor this today. The next one. Indexer's memory. Because I feel so blessed to have known that little boy. Lovell, I miss you. She's gone. Next to my baby, I love you so much. And so I just wanted to dedicate today to every little boy and every little girl who has a dream. And what did I write there? In loving memory of all of us who have dreams, to dream it, to believe it, and achieve it. You don't know what you're capable of. I know that. You have no idea. And we are all testament to we are bigger than we ever imagined. I just want to take a, a moment and say thank you to Dr. Jackie. Now, funny thing about Jacqueline, but Jacqueline is my mother's birth name. 
You want to bring this whole experience full circle to know that we are in the exact right place. Yes, I've never felt like I'm in a righter place my entire life. I have a whole group of sisters if you'll have me. Yes. I grew up as an ugly, awkward little kid with buck teeth and braces and were two years I couldn't talk about I had something over my mouth. But I evolved, I know, right? To get to this point, to get to your highest level, takes dedication, perseverance, and a belief in you. Because I'm gonna bet you that some of you, if I asked you right now, don't think that you're enough. Am I that resonating in anybody's ear that maybe you're not enough? You're not pretty enough, you're not rich enough, you're not thin enough, and guess what? You may never be all of those things. But I'm looking around and I'm seeing people who are more than enough. It is up to you to believe that you are that. And of all the things that I can, I watched, grew up watching the movie, Wizard of Oz. You all have it inside of you already. Maybe it takes a little wizard over here to go, yeah, you know what? That word permission. Yeah. I'm gonna encourage you to go home tonight and look in the mirror and say, I hereby grant you permission. Permission to what? To be gorgeous, to be amazing, to be fulfilled, to be whatever it is you want. You are in fact the only one, you are the only one holding you back. And you are the only one that have the power to talk to all those little girls and boys that I see are sprinkled around the audience to tell them that they can do it. There are no barriers if you choose not to have any barriers, really? Yeah, yeah seriously? Yeah. All right, so the last thing that I want to do while I'm up here, I also want to thank Miss Pasha Carter for all of us who know Pasha. Come yeah. on, How did I get here? Right? Yeah. Now we're done. Goodness, my girls, this is crazy. Yes, this is what this is about, I know it. Now, here's another crazy thing. So you do look at my face, right? You know what you don't know that you're looking at? See these cheekbones here? Until about a month ago, you've never heard of where my grandparents came from. I'm a child of Kiev and Odessa. I'm 100% Ukrainian. because there's people in a country you don't have to even know really where it is. But there are people who woke up one day with hopes and dreams like we have and somebody bombed them. Right or wrong is irrelevant. They have the dreams. They are the mom. They're watching their mall be destroyed, their maternity ward. There's an injustice in this world that I just don't want to tolerate anymore. Is that right? You guys with me on that? Yeah. All right. You guys over here okay with me? You guys are sitting there going, yeah, maybe, maybe. Just because they've got the cap and gown on, they're here because of your love, just so you know that. All the people here to say thank you. Can we all say thank you? Just thank you. The last thing I want all of you to do, I want you to go crazy. Can we just be kind of crazy and silly? All right. It's going to take some now. If you could end this with a song, that'd be nice. There's a song at the end of that, that slide deck that you might want to play, just because I'm very musically oriented. If you can get it, great. It'll be a nice ending to this. If not, it'll be a whimper. But you can figure it out. Okay, the last thing I want. Put your hand on your heart. We are being honored today. We all, this is all for all of you. Give me a dream, give me a hope. 2.5 billion sales, television career, who knew I could do any of this? I did it because I just didn't stop. I'm damn stubborn. That's the only difference. I just didn't give up. People put me down, told me I couldn't all over the place. You stop waiting for someone to give you permission. You look in the mirror and give yourself the permission. It's the only way it's happening, okay? And I'm not joking about this. Do not wait. No, not for anyone, at all. But now I will tell you, I'm locking arms with a whole bunch of people who will choose to believe in you. But it starts with you. It starts with you saying, I am, I can, I will. Yes, I am, I can, I will. Yes, can you hear that? I am, I can, I will. Yes, a little louder. I am, I can, I will. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I am. <laughs> See, you think nobody's watching. Seriously, one more time, put your hand in the air. I am, I can, I will. Yes. Now, one last thing. How about we take the roof off of this church? Anybody want to do that? I may, I may need Dr. Ann Brethren by the time I'm done here. All right, so the last little piece of this. I'm loving this so much. Put your hand back on your heart. I want one dream. Now you can all find me on social media, okay? When you achieve this dream that I'm gonna ask you to fight for right now, you write me and say, I Forbes did it. <laughs> See, to form something means you manifest it, especially when no one else thinks it's possible. My doctors have forged it, yes! All right, but you got some dreams 
over there in the peanut gallery, people outside who I'm thank you so much for being out there. Ready? Here's what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna whisper this. My little boy over here, what is his name? Tommy? Thomas. Can you smile for me? Yeah. See, I got big dreams and hopes for you. Because my boy lives on in you. You got it? That's not a joke. I look at every little kid and I see the dreams and hopes that I didn't get to experience with Dexter. Not in this lifetime. He's on my shoulder, he's smiling, he's like, Mom, you go. Who thought we'd be here? I'm going to count three, two, one. And you're going to yell as loud as you can the word jump. I'll tell you why. I love my dad. My dad was my hero. He was an inventor. He was crazy. No one believed he could do any of the things that he did. Without a college education, he became an engineer. He's a magician. He's my life. I loved him. My parents both gone 22 years. You are my family because I don't have a family. I grew up without sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles. The people in front of me, the people I choose to include in my life, you're my family. Can't we all just be family? You are the only ones who say that's not possible and you stand for this. One day he gets a call, he's got cancer. We get to the hospital. He doesn't have long, he says, I think I'm gonna die. I said, no, no, dads don't die. I never met anybody who died back then. The last night of his life, they have you walk around the hospital with his IV, right? And he walks with me and he said, kiddo, he said, you have always jumped, you've always followed your heart, you've always, you marched to your own drum your whole life. And I watched from the sidelines. I wish I had jumped into my life sooner. And we're walking around and we get to where there's all these cables at the hospital. And he puts his ID on the other side. And he said, I'm gonna jump. And he does, he jumps right over these cables and he falls on the floor. Nurses come running over and he's smiling and he looks up at me and he said, kiddo, it's too late for me. But you make people jump, help them find their way, whatever it is that they need. And I didn't know what that meant 22 years ago. I'm getting it. And thank you, Dr. Mohair, thank all of you guys, and everyone who believed at all in this crazy little girl that this dream could matter more than just me. And so you're gonna yell at the top of your freaking lungs the word jump, because when you do, it ignites the universe to take action, and they're listening. They're busy right now. See, God's taking care of the Oscars are coming, you know, or the Super Bowl. <laughs> You gotta bring God into this room. So he's a little busy, right? It's okay. He can do more than one thing, but just make sure. So we yell it so loud that the roof pops off. He can't deny that all the dreams and hopes that you are yelling about become reality. Are you ready? And as soon as they yell, if you'd like to pop in a song, whichever song you'd like. Here we go. I've got three. I've got two. I've got one. sing and I sung uh, If You Believe. 
Within your heart, you'll know that no one can change the path that you must go. So I'm encouraging everybody to believe, to what she said, I am, I can, I will, yes, and jump. Get in. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. Woo. Wow, I know, I'm trying to bring myself down. Y'all know I wake up on 10, so like I'm on 100 now. <laughs> At this time, we're going to welcome Pastor Jackie Simpson, and she's going to provide some words of encouragement for us. We're just going to keep it going, all right? Can y'all give her a hand as she comes? Trinity Girls Network empowers, inspires, heals, and guides young girls and women in the community, as well as those who are presently in abusive situations or have aged out of the foster care system and are transitioning to independent living by providing the necessary tools needed for them to become self-sufficient in all areas of their lives. Our purpose is to guide at-risk girls through adolescence to self-reliant and fulfilling lives. We are committed to increasing the number of girls that stay in school and do well academically, live healthy lives, achieve competency, and create a life and financial skills, and contribute to the better thing of their community. Do follow us on Instagram at Trinity Girls Network, or visit us on our website at www.trinitygirlsnetwork.org. Today, amen, I'm going to start off with an encouragement. And when I was sitting over there, I thought about the word encouragement. Why would you need to encourage someone? Amen, there's a scripture that says that in the world you will have tribulation. Amen, but be of good cheer. God said he ain't overcome the world, so we know that we can overcome the world. Today, I want to encourage each and every one of you beautiful women and the man of valor, to be encouraged, amen, in everything you do. Amen, I thought about never uh, say never, but never take, let someone tell you you can't have it. Amen. Whatever you want, you can obtain it. Amen. If you can see it, you can have it. Yes. So we encourage you today to go out and be bold, amen. Be unstoppable. Don't let no one stop you. Amen. We encourage you today to take whatever you want. Go out and take it by force. Amen. We encourage you today to go out and have what you want to have. Take hold of the business you want. A Fortune 500 business, you can have it. Amen. So go out and take it. Be encouraged that you can have it. We appreciate you today. We love you. And we ask that your family encourage you. Keep pushing them. Amen. We thank God for you that you've been there for them. But we just want to say be encouraged in everything you do. From this day forward, March 26, 2022. Amen. You be encouraged. Amen. You, be, you go out and excel in excellence. And never stop. Amen. Amen. And I want to also today let you know a little bit about Trinity. But first I want to thank um, Dr. H.T. <coughs> Mohair yeah. and Dr. Jacqueline Mohair. <laughs> Amen for Trinity. Amen. A great university. Tell someone about them. But I just want to encourage you today to give to Trinity. Amen. Trinity does so much and it's so dear to my heart. They deal with special need children and I'm a mother of a special needs daughter. Amen. So I think about the different programs, the after school care, the field trips, the tutoring, the um, teaching them how to go out and live in society. So today we're asking that you give to Trinity. Amen. To support these special needs children so they can go to summer school, so they can go to camp, so they can grow as well. Amen. They need you. 
Without you, they can't get it done. So we ask that you go deep today, amen, and uh, give. In ways you can give, we're going to ask that the ladies here start walking around. We have some buckets. If you want to give cash today, please do. And if not, we have a uh, cash app. You can go to Trinity IUA. And as you give, you think about these children. Amen. Some of them have parents that don't have the money to send them and do for them. But we got some money. If you put your dollar with your ten, with your hundred, with your thousand, we can get some things done. Amen. Sometimes we think it takes a lot of money. But there's a lot of us today. And I'm asking that we come together for a purpose. Amen. Amen. It's for these children. Ladies, I'm going to ask that you start walking through. Amen. And I'm going to ask that everyone hold up their cell phone. Amen. And I'm going to ask that you take that cell phone. If it's $5, $10, Trinity IUA. Amen. You want to go to the other side? If you want to give, please raise your hand so they can see you over on this side as well. We appreciate you guys and everything you do. And to our graduates, oh my God, what a day, what a day. We honor you today. We look to see you, as she said, on TV. We look to see you, amen. It's possible, yes. It's possible. We look to see you in some Fortune 500s, on the cover of magazines, in the White House. Amen. We look forward to seeing you. Amen. We appreciate you. Don't think you have to stop giving, even if it's past today. Remember that, Trinity. Amen. And give IUA Trinity Cash App is the dollar sign Trinity IUA, and we appreciate you. Be encouraged.
was awesome. I love the class. Got up and started giving a little rock on y'all song. It looked like a little choir up here. But I just want to change the words of the song a little bit. They say, I never want to hear you say I want it that way. But I, I'm telling you today, you declare over your life the way you want your life. And then you go after that. You point the trajectory of your life. You say, I want my life that way. So I'm looking at Forbes and I'm saying, $2.5 billion in sales. I want my life that way. So, so that's the way, that's the trajectory we're going in. So you can say what you want to say over yours, but that's what I'm saying over mine. All right. All right. So now we are coming to the point where we are uh, introducing our president of the university, um, Dr. Jacqueline Mohair. There's going to be a video that's going to play, but I can tell you, I have known her since. 1993. Wow. Yes, that's my sorrow. That's my sand. That's right. And I can say, um, just a wonderful testimony of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. I see that every day in Jackie. We were two of the craziest ones online, the two that didn't nobody want to mess with. I think I was in the category of when we cross, I'm not dealing with her. Um, and here we are all these years later. And God has strategically placed us Amen. in the lives of people to be able to make an impact, not just for this generation, but for future generations. So don't ever give up on a person based on where they are right now. Begin to see what God has put inside of them. And as, uh, as our pastor said just a moment ago, go ahead and encourage them to be who God called them to be. So I'm honored to present Dr. Jacqueline Mohair. We do honor Dr. H.T. Mohair in his absence today. They uh, have put this whole Trinity thing together. Everything is Trinity. Y'all saw that Trinity Girls Network, Trinity International University of Ambassadors, TIUA, which is Trinity International University of Ambassadors, School of Business. Everything's a Trinity. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. All right? So uh, if you will play the video, then the next voice you hear will be that of our own Dr. Jacqueline Mohair.
but it's not about me, but it's all about them. And we thank you all for joining in on today. You all may be seated. This is the hour that we're here. Members of the clergy, chaplains, special invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is an, indeed an honor and a privilege to be here today in celebration of our graduates and the conferral of their degrees. We congratulate you this day. We salute you this day. TIUA was established in April of 2017 under the leadership and founder of Dr. H.T. Mohair. We have now expanded into three different areas. TIUA, School of Business, Trinity International University of Ambassadors, Trinity Girls Network. We are accredited with the Worldwide Accreditation Commission of Christian Education Institutes. We are now currently in Florida, Pensacola, Florida, have a campus there. The accreditation is one of the largest non-governmental governmental full gospel accreditation agencies for over 30 years. TIUA is a United Nations accredited NGO with ECOSOC, consultative status, which means that we can go in now and take territory. Come on somebody, go to the heads of state, sit at the table, give an opinion, put things in action, come on somebody. in his glory. Amen? Amen? So we give him glory. We give him glory. But today, I want to challenge you. And that is one, to always stand on the word of God. Psalms 92 says that my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So today I decree and declare that when you leave this building, you shall walk out in freshness, in newness. You're covered in fresh oil today. Genesis 12 and 2. The Lord said, I will make your name great. So it's not about you. I know you'd love to take the credit. But he said he will make your name great. And he's doing it for his purpose. I said he's doing it for his purpose. He said that he will bless you. And he will make you a blessing. So what he's doing today, he's changing your name. He's adding to your credentials. Come on, somebody. Because he's making you a blessing and putting you in position to be a blessing unto those. Come on, somebody. Give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. Not just giving in tithes and offering, but giving in your time, giving in your experience, reaching back, pulling up the last generation or the next generation and pushing them forward. We heard Representative Billy talk about the civil rights. He talked about his grandmother. Today we're standing on the shoulders of greatness. Yeah. We're standing on the shoulders of those who stood in boldness and said, I'm going to walk through them doors. Come hell or high water, I'm busting through. But I want you to know today that God is setting you up to walk through some doors. Get ready for the expansion. Get ready for the next level. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. The Bible says that from the Lord. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from you. The idea doesn't even come from you. It comes from the Lord. He said wealth and honor comes from him. And he is the ruler of all things. But in your hands are strength. He's giving you strength. He's giving you power. Come on somebody. 
Hallelujah. So he's given us all the power to gain wealth. He's given us all the power to create because in the beginning he said, let us make man into our own image. And when he did that, he gave us the ability to create and to create and to create. But it matters where you're spending your time. And I come to tell you, you want to get out of the weeds of negativity. Yeah. If someone's talking negative and they're trying to discredit what it is that God is honoring you today, you say, no, 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 no. Yeah. The last time I checked, the word said that his ways yeah. are not my ways. Yeah. So what that means is, you may think, okay, I've done this to get that. But God, just like he did in the Bible, and there's a story of two individuals that came at the last hour. Somebody say last hour. Last hour. People have been working all day. Now you and me, we working all day. We working all day, working hard, right? Working all day. And here's somebody coming in at the last hour. You mean to tell me they're getting the same earnings that I've been working all day? I'm here to tell you, yes, you are. Yes, yes, you are. You know why? Because his ways are not your ways. Come on, somebody. This is a predestined moment. So I want you, when you walk out, I want you to stand flat foot and know that it's not by circumstance or happenstance. God designed this moment for you. It was him that believed, that breathed breath. Do you not know the air that we breathe in is his breath? Come on, somebody. It's his breath, it's not ours. So I want to challenge you that as you go out into the community and throughout the world, never forget what God has done for you on this day. Never forget. I want you to, when you leave, I want you to be bold. Go in the direction of your dreams. Stand tall and show the world what you are made of. When the world beats you down, find a reason to get back up again. Even though you may be knocked down, honey, I want you to get back up. Never give up on your dream. Never give up on your success. Never give up on that that you're striving for. Because God has placed you here for such a time as this. Come on, son. And I want you to, just like the train, he said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. You remember that from elementary? I think I can, I think I can. So I want you to try, try, and try, and try again. Because the difference in that trying is that you're not starting from the beginning, you're starting from experience. And sometime in life, we might have to go back and tweak some things in order to get it right. So I want you to keep going. I want you to feed your mind. Feed your mind with ideas, success. I want you to meditate. Meditate on the word. Meditate and spend time. Because I've already said that it is him who gives us the wealth, gives us the idea, gives us the creativity. Come on, somebody. And I want you to remember, the only way you can fail is you give up. If you give up, that's the only way you can fail. If you just stop living, or you stop dreaming, or you stop desiring, and then stop wanting to move forward, you're not scared. You're courageous. Let me say that again. You're not scared. You're courageous. You are not weak. You're powerful. You are not ordinary. You're remarkable. Do not back down. Do not give up. When you look back over your life, don't have regrets. Believe in yourself. Believe in your future. You will find your way. I said you will find your way. What we do, we try and we try and we try and we keep going. Knowing that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And the last time I checked in the word, it said, they that know their God shall do exploits. And if you're spending time with him, and if you know him, you're going to do the exploit. Even though you fall, get back up. It's okay. When a baby's trying to walk, they start out crawling, or they try to crawl. 
Then they start crawling. Then they get up. Then they realize they're standing and they fall back down. Then they get up again. Then they fall back down. But eventually, they get it. And they start walking. So I want you to walk today. I want you to stand tall. I want you to believe in yourself. Again, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. There's a fire burning. There's a fire burning on the inside. And I'm telling you today, it's a mighty fire. And it's waiting to burn bright. Don't let anybody dim your light. I said, don't let anybody dim your light. Follow your dreams. Hallelujah. Keep going. Don't allow the fear to stop you. Just let it push you. Just let it push you. Most people may master the art. But you create something great. And you keep going. You're beautiful. You're bold. It's your moment. It's you. Shine light. Shine bright. Shine bright. The fire is shining. The fire is shining. Come on, you're being purified. The Lord has set you up for such a time as this. So give it your best shot. Live your dream. Go for all that God has predestined. And on this day, I am excited because you're being pushed forward. And it's your moment, and it's your season. faculty will come and stand. Representative Billy Mitchell, Dr. Representative Billy Mitchell. Alumni, if you will come stand. Time. Yeah. Now, typically, when we go to graduations, especially at the collegiate level, they'll tell you that it's a reverent occasion and that you should be solemn and hold your applause until the end. Well, this ain't that kind of part. Okay. Uh, so we want you when your, uh, you know what? It's not just when your uh, your family member, your loved one, is called, but for everyone, we want you to celebrate. Lose your mind like it's you up here getting yours. Because you just may be the next one, all right? So what's going to happen is we have a couple of different ones that we're going to read. I'm going to read the first one of each, and then after that, I'll just call the name. When your name is called, if you would please come up, you're going to shake hands or fist bump uh, <laughs> with, uh, with each of the faculty, and then you'll come. Where's Dr. Jackie? You'll get your picture with Dr. Mohair, and then we'll proceed on to the next. Is that all right? All right. Trinity International University of Ambassadors hereby confers upon Reuben Charles 
Bobrun, the degree of Doctor of Divinity, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. In witness thereof, this diploma duly signed has been issued and the seal of the university affixed, authorized by the Board of Governors and Faculty upon recommendation of the faculty at Atlanta, Georgia, on the 26th day of March, 2022. Founder and Tans Chancellor, Dr. Jacqueline Mohair, President of the University, Dr. H.T. Mohair. Would you please give a round of applause for Dr. Global Women Foundation, Woman of Distinction Award, March 26, 2022. With grateful recognition, the United Nations Global Women Foundation awards and the Office Chief Ambassador's Honor, Dr. Frances Ann Bailey with the United Nations Global Women of Distinction Award for her lifelong commitment to building a strong global reach of service throughout the world signed by Dr. Jacqueline Mohair, Chief Ambassador. National University of Ambassadors, TIUA School of Business, hereby confers upon Francis Ann Bailey the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Entrepreneurship and Business Administration, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining. In witness thereof, this diploma duly signed has been issued and the seal of the university affixed authorized by the Board of Governors and Faculty upon recommendation of the faculty at Pensacola, Florida on the 26th day of March, 2022. Founder and Chancellor, Dr. Jacqueline Mohair, President of the University, Dr. H.T. Mohair. Would you please give a round of applause for Dr. Award from the United Nations Global Association, as well as the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Entrepreneurship and Business Administration, Honoris Causa. Dr. Bell, would you give her a hand, please? Next we have 
Vanessa Blackwell. <laughs> Vanessa is receiving the United Nations Global Women Foundation Women of Distinction Award, along with the Doctor of Philosophy in Entrepreneurship and Business Administration, Honoris <laughs> Causa. Next, we have Shalay M. Cameron. <laughs> Shalay is also receiving the Women of Distinction Award, along with the Doctor of Philosophy in Entrepreneurship and Business Administration, Honoris Causa. Dr. Shalay. <laughs> All right, 
give her a hand. Give her a round of applause. So we're going to redo. If y'all give me a redo. Dr. T. 
Tina Dizu. as well, the Global Women, amen, and the Doctor of Philosophy, Honoris Causa, Dr. Diana Maria. Women of Distinction 
Education Award, along with the Doctor of Philosophy, Honoris Causa. Give it up for Dr. Reed. My girl, with more credibility than ever, Dr. Forbes Riley. Dr. Riley is receiving both the Global Women. She got me laughing. You're receiving the Women of Distinction Award uh, from the United Nations, and you're also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Entrepreneurship and Administration on this Just in case anybody was wondering what was going on here. joining us online, so we celebrate her in cyberspace, Dr. Sasha Spade. She is receiving both awards as well. join me in celebrating Dr. Angelis Angelicia Stewart. That's Angelicia Stewart.
receiving both honors, the Global Women of Distinction Award, along with the Doctor of Philosophy in Entrepreneurship and Business Administration, Honoris Causa. Can we celebrate God with Dr. Andrew? Congratulations, Dr. 
individuals that are doing and have done some amazing things in the community. Even though we have a few now, but there will be more to come. Somebody say more to come. More to come. On today, I want to ask if the representative, Dr. Billy Mitchell, if he will come and stand beside me. What many people don't know is that we're just one call from the president and the vice president. <laughs> representative Dr. Billy Mitchell is the president of the National Black Caucus. And what that means is the entire United States. So he stand with me today on behalf of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Come on. You know you was just there for years ago. You know, it is, it is a privilege. And then when I said earlier that we have a prophet, I was running earlier for re-election, came back here and saw a pastor. He said that I, in fact, was going to meet presidents and the like. And later on, I became the president of the National Black Caucus of State Legislators. When I first joined that organization, a uh, little skinny state senator from Illinois was a member. I tell everybody that if I knew he was going to go on to be the Barack Obama, I'd built a better relationship with him. <laughs> but the reality is, uh, it is a... It is an honor that, I, that I, I hold dearly to be able to communicate often uh, with the president and vice presidents what's, for what's good for our community. Yes. And I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for this honor for sure. Thank you so very much.
this next award is our humanitarian award. What's interesting, and Dr. Representative Billy Mitchell can attest, is that Georgia had not had its own humanitarian day. So Governor Nathan, Governor Nathan Deal, former Governor Nathan Deal, gave the university a proclamation in honor of Georgia's humanitarian day. And on that day, we were able to honor the late Dr. C.T. Vivian, Dr. the late Juanita Abernathy, and several others, the late Dr. Rita Samuels, the late Congressman John Lewis. And we're excited today to honor Dr. Talisha Berry yeah. with the Georgia Humanitarian Award in appreciation and recognition for an outstanding leadership and visionary and guidance. So 
her culture, impact on the world throughout her recordings, style, clothing, and lifestyle. Since her early career in the 1980s, still today, continues to influence the younger generation. She has built a legacy that goes beyond music. Dr. Watt education and excellence is evident both in her philanthropic endeavors and business acumen. We at TIUA School of Business are so privileged to honor you and we stand with the state of Georgia to honor you with an honorary Georgia Citizen Award. Congratulations to all of you beautiful women and men. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mohair, Talisha Berry, Dr. Berry. My mom told me, and she's in failing health, and she said, make sure you tell them that when you were five, you told me that, Mommy, when I grow up, I'm going to have my own business. I'm going to sing, and I'm going to write. I'm gonna design my own clothes. And so, to all the little kids that are here today, it all starts with you dreaming big. You will have many doubters along the way. And to all of you, never let one of those doubters be you. All of my life, people have told me I can't do it, I can't be it. When my family was struggling, I would make clothes because I couldn't afford to buy clothes. So when you see my music videos, the history of that is I was going to home make and I learned how to sew. I would sell clothes. I would make pillows. So I've always been an entrepreneur. As an artist in, in the business of Jody Watley, artist, songwriter, producer, running three businesses, sometimes there's not a door for me the hell if I didn't make my own door. The more people doubted me, the more I believed. I prayed so much that my brother used to tease me because he said, you're gonna get scabs on your knees, you're always praying. And I'm like, I just believe and I have faith. So to you today, everybody, no matter what you do, with all the inspirational messages today. It is the light that lives within us. I call it the wattage light. The light that lives in all of us. Never let anyone dim your light, like you said. Because there's always someone that wants to dim it because they fear it. Just don't fear yourself. Don't feel, feel like you can't be it. You can be it and beyond what you ever imagined. Because he is looking upon us. So as my mom would also say, when people are digging a ditch for you, they're digging a ditch for themselves. As you step over it and you go on to live your dreams, never stop growing, never stop believing. And you are, you are more than enough. And like I said, let that light shine and shine it on others because if you light one candle and you light another, it won't dim the flame in the other. So don't be afraid to share, share your light because the world needs it. So thank you again. I'm just so flabbergasted and so honored. It truly is an honor to be amongst all of you today. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. I'm 
looking for a new love. When she comes up to the Capitol, we will certainly present her with the Honorary Georgian Citizen Award for sure. And I'm gonna let you all know who are aspiring to get this award from the, the as well, but we're gonna have the Vice President here in the future uh, activity. Dr. Jody Watley, I am so glad to be with you. Congratulations again. what he just said about the near future. Who's visiting? Who's visiting? Who's visiting? We are the House of Ambassadors. Come on, somebody. At this moment, I would like to bring up Dr. Angela Neely.
and you can be addressed as such. Do not compromise that. Your name is your name. When I was born, I was born infant girl Schwartz. I'm really a black Jew. <laughs> My biological father was a very famous man, Thomas I. Atkins. He desegregated more than half the schools in the United States and argued in front of federal, federal judges. I never met either one. I was left in the hospital. My name was not my name until my parents, Donald George Neely, Betty Jean Bullard Neely, gave me my name. And my mother and father were emphatic about my name. She wanted to call me Angel because in that time, black parents, African American parents, it was rare to be able to adopt black children. We're talking about the state of Indiana, a racist state. I, I, I will be honest, I have no problem with that. And then my father and mother said, we're going to call you Angel. No, we're going to call you Angela, messenger from God. So God told me to give you this message. Middle name Joyce, because they rejoiced, because there was no guarantee that I was going to get to stay with them. I could have gotten snatched at any time. That's just how it was. So my name was Infant Girl Schwartz from December 27, 1960 until May 26, 1964. So my name is huge, and I want all of you to know that your name is important and it's not up for negotiation or compromise. Yeah. And now, at All the right. end of the day, they have to call you doctor. Yeah. Doctor. Yeah. Doctor. Yeah. doctor. Yeah. I'll tell you one more piece of first story in this story. I come, I'm a second generation ambassador. This is your homework for everyone. Ambassador Cynthia Shepard Norton Perry. She's an ambassador appointed by two presidents, so I'm a second generation. Amazing woman, she has a book. She's still alive, she's about 93, lives in Houston, Texas. Our great-great-grandfather was the first black senator. Hiram Rhodes Revelles. That means, that means VP Harris is the 11th black senator, but my great-great-grandfather was the first. Only imagine what happened and what he went through. He married Phoebe Bass. They had six daughters. You know how women were insignificant, 1822 is when he was born. Three died, three lived. He became the first black president of an HBCU, Alcorn State University. My sister went to Tennessee State while I was at Fisk University. My niece went to Tuskegee. My cousins went to Hampton. We believe in HBCUs, but we believe in loving our people and loving ourselves. So, Dr. Forbes Riley, this is for you. I want to apologize because we did not do well. I work for FedEx at night. I helped raise, I don't have raise, I helped make billions for the company. I've, read, I've made about four billion for the company in the last three years. So I apologize that we didn't do what we were supposed to do well on your hat. I don't know the story, but I'm apologize publicly. I don't have a problem doing that. I don't have a problem. I work in the Indianapolis Hub, the, the second largest hub in the world. I have a position. There's only 10 of us that do what we do. There's two African American women. I'm one of the two. At the end of the day, they have to call me a doctor. They don't like it, but they do. But let me tell you what we're doing today for you, Dr. Forbes Riley. Three weeks ago, we gave 1.5 million to Ukraine to help. But today, a triple seven that weighs 80 tons is taking 74 tons of relief to Ukraine. Oh, right. We have stops because you don't know. just so you know, there are no flights going to Russia. There are no flights going to Ukraine except for the relief that we're sending today from Memphis right now today. So I'm going to offer that as a, as a peace offer. And, and, and Dr. Forbes, I want to officially welcome you to the sisterhood. <laughs> Our sisters and brother. Thank God for all of you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. This has been an awesome occasion to celebrate our newest graduating class. I say to you, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. So 
get yourselves ready. As we come to a close, I want to thank every volunteer, every guest, everyone that came out to make today a success. Thank you for your patience. Today, I know it's hot. I know you could have been somewhere else, but we're so grateful and humble that you decided to stay and to join us here to celebrate these awesome, awesome, and amazing graduates. So at this moment, we want to ask, let me close with prayer. Father, we thank you for every graduate. We thank you for every guest. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this season. We thank you, oh God. We thank you that you're taking them to greater heights. And we give you glory and we give you praise. We ask, so oh God, that as they travel, God, that you will go with them, God. And that you will encamp your angels around them. And we thank you, Lord that today marks a new day in their life. And we give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We want to ask that if all the guests, if everyone will exit and go outside, we want the graduates to stay for just a moment, but if all, everyone else can go outside, we'll do pictures. Everything will be set up outside to do the pictures. But we just want to, um, have the graduates to stay for a moment. So if everyone can exit for a moment. Both, both exits are open.